kind of welcome the eSpins decompiler overview for X-rays, which is a follow-up to our IDA blog recently. Right. So what the decompiler is for X-rays, this is an add-on to the initial IDA or IDA Pro solution. It's an x86 or ARM decompiler, and it adds a plugin to both versions. What it does is it converts low-level assembly language that's already converted by from the binary language into a more pseudocode language like C or C++. It's both concise, structured, dynamic, and familiar to the programmers. It takes less time to actually interpret the code since it's already converted from assembly to now a pseudocode language. It's structured, it's programmably easy to understand for humans to logic processes. It's more towards like pseudocode, it's simple language to set up variable names that confuse you or unnamed structures. It's dynamic and allows for variable names to actually be added in to make more better sense of the solution. And it also has to change it on the fly, so it's a lot quicker overall. In the end, when you want to understand the overall picture, you can have everything changed to what you're recognized and familiar with. And it's familiar. Pseudocode, everyone can understand to some extent, even if you're not a programmer or manager, you get a general picture of what's actually happening. And exception handle is not actually supported. Type recovery is not performed. Global analysis is performed, so you have to actually go to certain areas and have decompiled. So it's a little limited in that sense. And also, in the x86 version, 16-bit versions, 16-bit code is not actually decompiled or analyzed. And our specific limitations is that floating points, well, like point zero zero one one or whatever, is not actually supported currently. And this is an actual comparison of the difference in the language. It starts off with binary code, which is not very understandable by almost anyone besides actual computers. It moves on to what IDA provides you, which is this assembly code. And then finally, you get the decompiled output, which is a simple pseudocode representation of what actually happens. Like, if update results equal this, and then whatnot. This further description, this is a full-fledged example of what a decompiled code block would look like. It's concise, strict, and it has easy flow of logic. So what does the compiler actually add to the whole suite of products is that it adds a couple different options in the options menu. For example, the sub view of the pseudocode window, jump to pseudocode, create a C file for backups or exporting your data, and various different add comments, delete pseudocode, which I'll go into detail in the following sections. So the pseudocode view is something that pretty much decompiles the current selection if a window, and if it's successful, and the window it's not open, it opens a window, and inversely, if it is, it closes it. And also, pressing enter decompiles the current selection while escape, which lets you jump through the code quickly and fast. Control enter or double click will close, open the new window, and F5 refreshes the new window, but it doesn't automatically refresh, you actually have to manually refresh it if you want it to happen. Jump to pseudocode just Toggles between the, the both views, which is this assembly, which is the assembly code, and the pseudocode window. Pressing tab allows us to switching to be done a lot quicker than actually having to worry about clicking jump to pseudocode in the windows. And then creating a C file decompiles the selected function of the entire application, and output is just formatted into a .c file. Pseudocode comments and deleting pseudocode comments. So the decompiler current the decompiles the current function and copies the pseudocode to a disassembly listing, which is this enter comments listed up to the side of the code. And if the current function already has pseudocode window open, its contents are used instead of decompiling the function all over again, saving you time and processing. And deleting is just the inverse, it removes the window the, the, the actual comments that have been added. You can also add instructions which allow you to skip different sections, for example. If you want to mark, unmark a section, because sometimes decom IDA actually misses these sections, so this is like how you specify IDA to decompile something. And of course, you can reset the decompiler information by just using the reset decompile information option. Also, as mentioned before earlier in our other presentation, IDA relies on setting databases and whatnot to help other people ever recognize the work that de that's been decompiled and to share better malware and virus analysis. This makes it easy, and also it helps in bug reporting with any issues that you do have with the decompiler. Send database, it just pretty much packs up and sends all the current databases to the X-ray server. But there's one thing to note is that currently it's only supported in the Windows version and not Linux or Mac versions. And you've got the extract command function, which is an ex command deletes all the code and data from the current IDB extract. If you have any other further questions or would like to purchase the software, you can visit our eStore or contact us at sales at eSpinCorp.com. Thank you for listening.